This is MNB TV, sponsored by My Web Grocer, the leading provider of digital grocery and CPG solutions. What would be your message to these folks who we may now have scared a lot? Saying, oh boy, wait, what do we, now what do we do? So if you were a traditional, if you went back to a, to a traditional retailer, you were going to open up a store, what would you do to compete in this marketplace? Other than make sure you have a really good website and a really good mobile, what, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all, that's all uh, fairly tactical. Um, I mean, you know, I guess I would, I, I would think about you know, who my customer is, um, and it's probably a broad, because if, if it's a food store, it's probably a pretty broad uh, range of, of shopper. And I would make sure that I had a way to connect with, with each of them in a way that's relevant to them. Um, you know, and, and that could be digital, it could be mobile, it could be web, it's probably all of that. Um, you know, I would, um, and it's still such a small percentage today, but you know, the, the notion of ordering online somehow, be it either managing a list, or sending an order to store to be, uh, you know, assembled um, to, you know, local delivery. Um, you know, it's still way in its infancy, and and you know, even the the, the retailers that are into it in a big way, it's no more than five or six percent of their sales. So it's still really small, um, and there's still a bunch of profit challenges around that. But if you look at the categories where dig that digital has impacted prior to ours, right? It's it has transformed the business, and it will transform this business, and I think you just got to kind of be there uh, as it happens. And you know, if you think of what the store of the future is going to look like, you know, it could look very different than it does today. You know, we're all seeing folks go into smaller, smaller formats. Sure, that's likely. Um, I think the notion of the back room, you know, as a as a back stock, it's it's to you know replenish my floor. You know, that's going to change. I think that's going to become uh, more about you know order assembly and local distribution. Um, I think the notion of, of, of uh, partnering, um, be it with an Amazon, although we, we talked about that, um, or you know, another emerging service provider to be able to offer you know, these in-market services. You know, there are other, obviously, players today that do the, the, the web services and the, and the ad platforms and kind of all that kind of web list management. Um, but you know, bringing that through to order fulfillment, I think that's really important. Um, so again, it's really just understanding the customer, understanding where, where they're going, and, and being able to serve them in a way that's relevant, which is really no different than kind of retail 101 was 20 years ago. It's just that the, it's just that the game, the framework has changed. Well, I do think it's important, and I, I want to make sure we come back to it, because the name is in the title, and, and that's Zipcar. Um, and I think it's at least considering, worth considering Zipcar for a moment, because Zipcar has been around for a number of years now. But I'm willing to bet that at no point did Hertz or Avis ever sit around their offices saying, you know what we really need to do? We really need to create a system where there's two or three cars in various parking lots over various cities. We'll rent by the hour. People won't have to pay for fuel. They won't have to fill out all that paperwork to do with insurance and all that kind of stuff. They won't have to go to centralized locations. And we'll rent them cars they really want to rent, like you know, minis and mini convertibles and things like that, and BMWs. Hertz and Avis never thought about that until, while it may be, it may be hard to figure out, and who knows if they're gonna have, they have a long-term potential or not, Zipcar came along and disrupted it in a way that has to make them think about what is the validity of their traditional mm -hmm. model. And I think that's, that's a great example of, even when you don't, that, that the next big competitive threat to this industry, we may not even know about yet. They may not even be on the right. horizon, it may not, not be on anybody's radar. Yeah, I think that's likely, and you know, spending the time that I spent in Silicon Valley and Seattle, and you know, seeing the next generation of innovation around e-commerce, you know, some of the stuff that's happening out there is just—it's mind—it's mind blowing. Um, you know, I will say the one thing that we kind of have going for us, if that's really going for us in this category, is the underlying economics of delivering grocery and health and beauty products generally, uh, grocery more so than health and beauty online is is difficult. You know, it's it's not a slam dunk, right? It's it's 
you know, they're, they're, they tend to be heavy, they tend to be low value, you know, relative to the price. Um, so, you know, kind of given traditional distribution models, um, that's been uh, a challenge. But I will say, as, you know, Amazon deploys more facilities, as these other players, um, you know, are, are building facilities and are getting out in more places and more markets, the economic hurdles of, of this category will go down over time. And it will get more possible um, to, to conduct these categories online and conduct these in markets. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, you know, it's good that it's not already, you know, economically simple, because if it was, it would probably already be disrupted. You know, I think we're still really early in the disruption cycle uh, of this category. But trust that it will get there. Well, and those of you who know me know that I cannot possibly let this occasion go by without using a line from a movie. And in this case, I would refer you to, to what something Tom Hanks said in A League of Their Own, when somebody complains about it being too hard. And he says, it's supposed to be hard. It's the hard that makes it worth doing. Uh, you thought I was going to say there's no crying in baseball. Um, but it is the hard that makes it worth doing. And I know a lot of this is st stuff is overwhelming. You know, I've been sitting in audiences during, during the last couple of days, and I can feel sort of the weight of this on people's shoulders. And the fact of the matter is you can't, it, it, this industry, if it's going to continue to survive and thrive, you can't look at this and yep. say, we can't do this, this has changed, this is hard, I don't want to do it, or be dragged into it kicking and screaming. You've got to wake up in the morning and say, how am I going to change my world today? Right. Don't be a victim. Don't let it happen to you. And, and come back to, you know, our Amazon mantra. Today is day one. Today is day one. And now, a few moments with my web grocer. What has really taken off is we are assisting a good number of CPG companies in effectively leveraging their digital spend uh, to drive the transactions at the local retailer. And we measure it all and we'll give the data back to the CPG company and the retailer. And, and the CPG company can go to the retail partners and say, we spent all of this money in the digital space and here's what you sold because of it. That is a very good partnership. Now, it's self-serving for the CPG company. They want the product to move and embed the loyalty, but that's okay because the retailer wants that product bought from them. And that is a very good use of, of sort of this collaboration. And are they finding at this point that that spend is more efficient and effective than traditional spends have been? Yes, because it gets back to the first uh, thing that we talked about is the ability to measure it, right? If it isn't effective, then we stop doing it and we go to what is effective. And because you can measure all of this, uh, it doesn't take you long to, to, to hone in on what really works. And then when you find it, accelerate it. Next time on MNB TV.